Hi, I'm Evie Kirkwood from St. Joseph County Parks. Join me as we experience nature together. Outdoor Elements is presented in partnership with the St. Joseph County Parks Department, regional parks with natural fun, St. Patrick's County Park, Ferretti Bago Creek County Park, Bendix Woods County Park, and the Spicer Lake Nature Preserve. Today on Outdoor Elements, host Evie Kirkwood is in search of things with fins and feathers. Meet a couple that make a home for hundreds of birds as they manage purple martin condos. Learn about wild turkeys and the art of a turkey call. But up first, see how a local conservation club stocks brown trout for fishermen. Today we're actually going to have a great opportunity to see some trout being released in local streams and I'm with Ed Evans and Ed is the hatchery manager at the Elkhart Conservation Club. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It is a beautiful morning. Why don't you tell us where we are and what's going to happen today? Sure. Um, we're at Elkhart Conservation Club. We're at um, just inside the county line off of Ash Road at the Conservation Club. And what we're doing today is we're going to release some brown trout that we've raised. Um, we've received them as eggs from a hatchery in Wisconsin okay. um, back in January. And it is September now, and so they've had nine months to grow, and they're about between four and six inches long, and so we're going to release them. And there's several streams across northern Indiana that we release them in. They're cold water streams, and okay. one, one of which we have here on the property. Now, how many years has the Elkhart Conservation Club been releasing trout in the area? Well, they've been releasing trout since the late 30s. Wow, so it's kind of a long tradition. And how's the, the project funded? Uh, the project is funded really just um, by donations. And it is from, the trout eggs were purchased by a, a grant through the, from the St. Joe River Valley Fly Fishing Club. Yeah. And everything else is funded right here on our property um, wow. through membership fees. And great, whatnot. great. So it's a real kind of group effort, team effort to, to make this all work. And I understand the next step, you've, you've kind of filled up a tank that's gonna be used for transporting with, with some water. That's right. Next step is we gotta get fish in the tank, right? We're gonna put fish in the tank. All that's right. where That's where they're gonna go. Yep. All right, great, well let's go check that out. All right, let's all right. do that. All right, so Ed, we're standing here in the in the hatchery building at the yep. conservation club, and you are basically netting out these little fingerlings of brown trout. How many little brown trout are in this tank? There's about twenty-seven thousand brown trout wow. in here right now. We started with thirty-five thousand eggs, uh -huh. and like I said, we've reared them since January. Yeah, and now how many different places are you going to try to release today? We're going to release them in three different places: um, the grapevine. Uh -huh. Is one. Uh, Grapevine Creek, yeah. Grapevine Creek, just west of South Bend. Yeah. And then um, the little Elkhart, which is out in Laporte County. We're going to release at several points there. We release, try to release along the creek um, as you go through. You just leave them in one spot, they stay there for about two or three weeks. We kind of want to spread it out ah. over about a two and a half mile distance. Now, do these guys actually breed in the creeks that you release them into, or not but sure? We really, we're really not we sure. Uh, yeah. the, the brown trout. They'll go through the motion, okay, and they'll they'll go to create a red, which is a um, house for them. There, yep. yeah, a little red yep. in the water, and um, they go through the motion. We don't know exactly if they reproduce or not. We'd like okay. to believe they do, sure, sure. Um, but and the brown trout really are much more tolerant of the hotter weather than the rainbows right. and the fish. And right. um, they they they're here. We know they are. Right. You know, they've they've been here for years. Yep. Um, so, all right. It's one of our cold water streams. Yep. And of course, that's what these guys need. They need that's cold water. That's what they need. Cold, they need cold, cold water. water. This water that's in our hatchery is about 52 degrees. Oh, wow. Okay. So it Pretty is a little chilly. colder. All yep. right. Okay. Now, can I take this bucket over to the tank? Yep. All Go right. right ahead. Just dump it right in? Just dump it right in. Okay. Ooh, look at them go. How do you tell that they're brown trout? No, they, they actually, um, their colors, the way, the, the way they, they have little spots on them, and you'll be able to see the little black spots on them. Yep. And then they've got the little bigger, larger spots 
and then they'll begin they'll, they'll turn color they'll, they'll get to a nice brown color they change color with the seasons as well okay okay let's get more let's get some more <laughs> Okay, so we're here at Cobus Creek County Park and we're going to try to get some of these fish out of the transport tank into the bucket. You want me to lift it up? Yeah. Over the water? Yeah, that way. Good. Yep. And look at that. These guys are going to get a new home in a few minutes. This is Cobus Creek. Where does Cobus Creek flow into? Okay. This flows into the St. Joe River. It comes out of Garver Lake in Michigan. Yep. And um, this was a new, this park's been here. Um, the county bought this a couple years ago, and they've done a lot of stream work through here. River yeah. tenders did with Valparaiso University students Excellent. volunteering, and the St. Joe River Valley Fly Fishing Club and Elkhart Conservation Club. All right. So. Now now this is a, as you mentioned earlier, this is a cold water stream. This is a cold water stream. Why do trout need cold water? Trout need cold water so that there's a higher amount of oxygen in the water. The warmer a stream is or the river is, the lower the oxygen level. So okay. we're really looking at dissolved oxygen here. Okay. And th this stream right here is just about 63, 62 degrees. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, it doesn't really get much colder than that. We have nice flow. Right. Um, you can see the large rocks and the, the trout really need to have something to hide in. And they have a lot of... Um, stone right so rocks. that's important you don't want a stream that's just sandy bottom you for, do not for want just right. sandy bottom okay and also this creek has a lot of trees shading it which i imagine a lot helps, of shade. helps keep the water temperature cool right? it helps keep the water temperature down water uh, the trees over overhanging is a big bonus here now once you drop these fish in they're mm -hmm. gonna you know swim all around they're gonna feed um, throughout the fall the winter will these be catchable fish when trout season opens in the spring these will probably, they'll still be small. They're three yeah. to um, six inches long and they usually grow about three to five inches in a year. Obviously, we've gotten them this big since January, right. but we've been feeding them you know, every hour on the hour, uh -huh. 24 hours a day. So here they're gonna have to be looking for their food a little bit right. different, right. but they, they know what to do. They'll hide and they'll, they'll, yep. they'll survive. We're not gonna see a lot of survival here, but we're, gonna, we're certainly gonna hope for at least um, a few dozen up and okay. down the stream. Now, of course, a few of them, once they get released, are going to become food for other fish or great Birds. blue herons or That's those right. kinds of things. But hopefully the point is that some will survive and anglers like you and others can enjoy catching them. That's right. In the, in the upcoming seasons. All okay. right. Well, shall we let them go? We should let them go. All right. Here let's we go. go. There they go. That's there great. And you know what? You're right. Instantly they kind of head for the shadows, they don't sure they? They sure do, yeah. That's great. They head right for the shadows. And this is a lunker structure under here, so they'll, they'll head under there. If there's larger fish there, they become food. <laughs> they become food. All right. Well, Ed, I know you've got lots of other places to drop fish today, so thank you so much for showing us a little bit about this great project with the Elkhart Conservation Club. All right. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Up next, Meet a couple that make a home for hundreds of purple martins each spring. Have you had a chance to check out the Outdoor Elements webpage? It's a place to watch Outdoor Elements shows that you've missed and so much more. Do you love to take pictures of nature? Click on the Gallery tab and check out nature shots submitted by other viewers. And while you're there, share some of your own. You can also find Outdoor Elements wallpaper you can download for your desktop. It's a great way to remind yourself of all the outdoor elements around you. There's lots more to see and do on the Outdoor Elements webpage, so click on over 